Hello, my name is David Hoffman and in this video we'll be taking a detailed look at a RAM tester I built to test a batch of 6264 RAM ICs I purchased off of eBay. I wanted to share this design to help others develop their own custom tools. You might also want to take a moment and download the schematic and source code for the RAM tester from the link in the video description. Okay, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the tester in operation. Now, I'll apply power and it will start testing the chip in the ZIF socket. The tester will make three passes. The first pass starts at address 0 and proceeds to write all zeros to each memory address in the RAM chip, and then reads that data back and compares that data to make sure everything is OK. However, before moving on, all ones are written to the same register address in preparation for pass 2. This will test the RAM chip's ability to hold data for a short period of time. On pass 2, we again start at address 0 and work our way up, with each memory location being read, compared, and then writing the complement back. This is again in preparation for pass 3. So on pass 2, we read all ones from the memory location, compare the data, and then write back all zeros. Now on pass 3, we are only concerned with reading back in the data written, which should all be zeros at this point. If the test is successful, chip OK will appear on the display, and if the chip fails, then bad chip will appear. In addition, if the unit is powered up and there isn't a chip installed, no chip will be displayed. Later in the video, we'll cover how a chip's presence is detected. Next, I'll cover some of the basics for the RAM chip that's being tested. Since the first piece of information required is the data sheet, that's where we will begin. The most important information contained in any data sheet is the pin layout for the chip. So before you decide to buy a used chip, make sure you can get the data sheet for the chip. And let's face it, without the data sheet, the IC will prove to be most useless. The next thing we need to know is the safe operating frequency of the IC and most notable, the setup time for data, the minimum hold time clocking data in or out for the clock signal, and the minimum time for retrieving data from the device. To keep things simple, I usually take the longest time requirement on the data sheet and use that as my guide to writing code. In the case of a full read or write for the 6264, that is between 100 nanoseconds and 150 nanoseconds, depending on what variation of the IC you have. Now, since this tester uses a PIC microcontroller, the 16C55 to be exact, we simply need to estimate the time it takes for a single instruction to execute. The microcontroller is using a RC circuit for the clock and is running at approximately 6.916 MHz, as measured on oscillator 2 multiplied by 4. Taking that value and dividing it by 4 gives an actual instruction frequency of 1.729 MHz. To find the actual time it takes to execute an instruction, simply divide 1 by 1.729 MHz for an answer of 578 nanoseconds. This is good news for us, as this means we won't have to worry about timing one little bit. The C55 is simply running too slow to even come close to the minimum setup time for any of the RAM's operations. Now, let's talk about the layout for the tester. The testing unit consists of four ICs. The first is the 16C55 OTP microcontroller. The microcontroller handles two main tasks, updating display and testing the RAM. Now, since the C55 doesn't have enough I.O. ports to handle both data and address lines to the memory chip, and updating the display, two MCP23008 port expander chips are used. The first handles address lines A0 through A7, while the second handles address lines A8 through A12. The microcontroller communicates with these two port expanders using the I2C protocol. Now you might be thinking that the 16C55 doesn't support I2C directly, and you are absolutely correct. To get the microcontroller and the port expanders talking to each other, I had to bitbang the I2C protocol in the microcontroller. If you'd like to know more about bitbanging I2C, then I recommend you pick up bitbanging I2C for PIC processors available on Amazon. The ZIF socket located here is removable. 
considering that this tester would be used only on occasion, I didn't want to commit the zip socket to it permanently. So this zip socket is plugged into another socket that is in turn soldered to the breadboard. The display unit is from a closeout lot which are no longer available. So if you want to replicate this design, I'd recommend using a low priced LCD. There's also a reset switch, which is mainly used to reset the microcontroller when inserting a new test subject into the ZIF socket. I think it's important to note a few things on the schematic. You'll notice that on D0 there's a pull-up resistor. When the tester is first powered up, it sets all the address bits to 0 and then writes 0 to D0 on the RAM IC. The microcontroller then reads this data back, and since the pull-up resistor will always want to force a 1, a RAM chip must be present to return a 0. So, if a 0 is received from the read, then there is a chip present and it's ready for testing. If a 1 is read back, then there's either no chip present or the chip is bad from the start. Now let's cover the testing flow. When the microcontroller first starts up, it goes through the process of configuring I.O. ports and the port expanders. Once that's accomplished, the program executes the chip presence test. Provided that test is passed, the program then moves into the first of three phases to test the RAM chip. Phase 1 consists of writing 00 hex to the current RAM address, reading data back and comparing that to what was written, and noting any errors that occurred. We then write FF hex to the current RAM address. This step is in preparation for pass 2. The program then loops around and does the same process again until all memory addresses have been tested. Pass 2 consists of reading the current RAM address, comparing that to FF hex and noting any errors that occur, writing 00 hex to the current RAM address in preparation for pass 3, and looping around until all memory addresses have been tested. Pass 3 consists of reading the current RAM address, comparing that to 00 hex and noting any errors that occur, and just looping around until all memory addresses have been tested. At the end of the test, if an error occurred, then the bank that it happened in is displayed. Now, this simple code does accomplish the task of testing the RAM's chip for usability, but it could certainly use some touching up to both compress the code and increase the number of tests each RAM chip is subjected to. I think in the near future I will revisit this code, clean it up some more, and increase the number of tests. But for now, the RAM tester serves its purpose of being a tool to test these chips. I hope you found this video useful and informative. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or post them in the comments section of this video. Thanks for watching.